Welcome back to part 6 of this mini-series, Let's Make and Solve a Rubik's Cube in Unity. In the last episode, we added player interactivity, with the ability to rotate any side of the cube with the mouse. In this episode, we'll add automated movement, and the ability to shuffle the cube at the press of a button. We're going to be picking up right where we left off, so if you missed the previous episodes, I do recommend checking them out first. Now that we can manually move the sides of our cube around, let's set up the logic for moving the sides programmatically too. We can attach a new script to the cube called Automate. This script will automatically perform moves that exist in a list of moves, so let's make a variable to hold the list. There will only ever be one list of moves that the cube is currently performing, so this can be a public static list of type string, move list equals new list of type string. In the update method, if there are still moves left to perform, if move list dot count is greater than zero, and a side is not currently moving, do the move at the first index. Then remove the move at the first index. Move list dot remove, move list at index zero. When we do a move, we need to automatically rotate a side. We can do this with a new method, void rotate side, and we give it a list of type game object and the side we want to rotate, as well as the float angle to rotate by. Then we automatically rotate the side by the angle. At the moment, the individual pivots are responsible for looking after if they are auto-rotating, but we will need to know if any of the pivots are auto-rotating for this to work. So we can head over to the cube state script and create a new public static bool auto-rotating and set it false to start with. In the automate script, we also need to know the contents of the side we are rotating, so we'll need access to the instance of the cube state script too. Cube state, cube state, cube state equals find object of type, cube state. We'll also need a method that changes the angle based on the move we are doing. Void do move, and we pass it the string of the move we want to do. As we are automatically moving a side, we need to set the global auto rotate flag to true. Cube state dot auto rotating equals true. If move is equal to u, a clockwise move of the upside, rotate side, and that will take in cube state dot up and negative 90 float. We'll get this working and then we'll add the rest in later. Over in the pivot rotation script, we need a way to set the variables for the automatic rotation passed to an individual pivot. Public void start auto rotate. This will take in the side we pass, list of type game object side, and the float angle we are rotating it by. Just like the other methods, we need to pick up the pieces we are moving. Cube state dot pick up side. As we're calling the pickup method here too, we need to refactor out the call it does to the pivot rotation script, as this will cause conflicting rotations to occur at the same time. We can cut these two lines and place them in the select face script, underneath where we call the pickup method. Back in the pivot rotation script, we can continue building the start auto rotate method. Figure out the axis to rotate around, vector3 local forwards equals vector3.0 minus side at index 4 dot transform dot parent dot transform dot local position. Set the target quaternion, target quaternion equals quaternion dot angle axis, and that will take in angle and the local forward multiplied by transform dot local rotation. We can then set the active side to equal side and auto rotating to equal true. Then once the rotation is complete, we need to turn off the global auto rotating flag, cube state dot auto rotating equals false. Back in the automate script, as we're not clicking on a face, we'll need to grab the pivot rotation script of the centerpiece in the side we are rotating. Pivot rotation PR equals side at index four dot transform dot parent dot get component of type pivot rotation. Then we can call the new start auto rotate method we just created for that specific pivot, PR dot start auto rotate and that will take in the side and the angle. To test if this is working, we can hard code a couple of entries into the move list and only do the next move if the current move has finished and cube state dot auto rotating is false. Hit play and oh, something's gone wrong. We have an argument out of range exception. This means that we attempted to access the index of a list or array that doesn't exist yet. In this circumstance, we are trying to do a move before any of the lists have been populated because the arrays we are going to populate them with have not been created yet. I would like a way to make sure that the game has fully loaded and everything is ready before we attempt to perform any automation. Over in the cube state script, we can create a new public static bool started and set that equal to false. Then, in the read cube script, once the arrays have been created, we can do an initial read of the state of the cube. Read state, 
Then we can toggle the started bool to confirm that everything is finished loading. kubestate.started equals true. Next, in the update method of the automate script, we can add the conditional that kubestate.started needs to be true before we do anything else. Back in the editor, we can see that if we hit play, the upside of the cube completes two 90 degrees clockwise rotations automatically. Let's make that a full rotation by adding a couple more U moves. Hit play and yeah, the upside makes a full rotation. Perfect. Now we can add the rest of the moves. We'll carry on using the standard notation for Rubik's cubes, so if the move is U with an apostrophe, we need to rotate the upside 90 degrees anti-clockwise. If move is equal to U with an apostrophe, rotate side, and that will take in cube state dot up and 90 floats. Adding a two in the notation is for a half rotation, so if move is equal to U2, rotate side, cube state dot up, negative 180. As these moves are agnostic to the direction we're looking at the cube from, the remainder of the moves play out in much the same way, changing only the move letter and the side to rotate based on that letter. I'll speed this up, but you can come back and pause here to make sure that you got it right if it doesn't work the first time. Now we have rules for each direction, we can clear the move list and create a new, private, read-only list of type string for all the moves, all moves, and that is equal to a new list of type string built from the clockwise moves U, D, L, R, F, and B, the half turn moves U2, D2, L2, R2, F2, B2, and the anti-clockwise moves U apostrophe, D apostrophe, L apostrophe, R apostrophe, F apostrophe, and B apostrophe. Every time we do a move, we should first confirm the current state of the cube as if we change sides, the contents of the side that we move will have changed. We need a private read cube read cube. Read cube equals find object of type read cube. And down in the do move method, we can read the cube. Read cube dot read state. Now that we know the state of the cube before each move, we can use the list of moves to generate a random shuffle of the cube and the move list to animate it with a new method, public void shuffle. This method will build a list of shuffled moves, so we'll need to make that list of type string moves equals a new list of type string. We'll also need the number of moves to make. I'm picking a random number of moves between 10 and 29 inclusive. You are welcome to increase this to make the result more random int shuffle length equals random.range 1030. Then for the length of the int that we just generated, we can do a loop. For int i equals zero, and i is less than shuffle length, increment i. And pick a random move index from the list of all moves. Int random move equals random.range, and that will take in zero and all moves.count. Then we can add that move to the list of shuffled moves. Moves.add, all moves, at the index random move. Once all the moves have been added, we can set the move list to equal this new list of random moves. Move list equals moves. I'm going to hook this shuffle method up to a button, so back in the editor, we can hit 2D mode and double click on the canvas in the hierarchy. Right click the canvas and create a new UI button. I'm going to put mine here and anchor it to the bottom left corner. Resize it a bit and change the text to read shuffle. Let's increase the font a little so we can read it. Then in the buttons on click method in the inspector, we can add an action. Pass in the cube from the hierarchy, select the automate script and the shuffle method. Now if we hit play and press the shuffle button, we get a random shuffle applied to our cube. We can move the cube around, shuffle again, and it still works. Excellent. However, if we left click to grab a side, things can go badly wrong. Let's fix that now. Here in the select face method, we can only accept left clicks if the cube is not auto rotating. And cube state dot auto rotating is false. Now it doesn't matter if we click the left mouse button, the click won't be accepted if the cube is auto rotating. That's it for part six. In the next episode, we'll solve the cube automatically using the Cochemba two phase method. If you're enjoying this series, then please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.